views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Welcome to Higher TV. I am your host, Anderson Figueroa. Navigating living in the Bronx can be tough and challenging. As a creative, it can mold and shape your work into something truly special. One Bronx creative has done such, Manuel Gomez, AKA Manuel. He is creative from the Bronx where your work continues to go further and further. First and foremost, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Anderson. I appreciate it, man. Of course, of course. I'm glad to have you. Tell me a little bit about yourself and the work you do. Um, so my name is Mango. Um, that name usually gets asked where it derives from, and it comes from my name, Manuel Gomez. Took the man out of Manuel, the girl out of Gomez. We ended up at Mango. Um, and I consider myself a curator from the Bronx, um, a person who just has definitely some passions when it comes to photography, cinematography, fashion design modeling um marketing but i really just love bringing things to life whether it's just an idea about a sweater that's just for a couple friends or it's like a mass production that can possibly shift culture in some way or just cause cause an awareness and bring innovation to design i love that and how has the bronx shaped all of that how has it inspired you a lot a lot, honestly, because um, the Bronx has so much beauty, um, known as one of the toughest boroughs in New York City. It's very, has a strong basis, whether you know about it or don't. Um, has a lot of history, too. And I feel like the history still lingers in the Bronx. And um, when it comes to being a photographer and you just walk these streets with a camera, you, you find moments that are only the Bronx would have. And it allows me to take the Bronx but bring it to the people in the world in a way where they can perceive it. I love that. I love that. And knowing what's your inspiration, how it shaped you, what does your process look like? What what steps do you take in order to, to, to get to where you want to be? I would say for sure, like um I take in everything as inspiration. Like talking to you right now, um having this conversation in the moment of thinking. Um I literally look at the smallest thing as inspiration. So when I wake up, I look at I look at the window, out the window next to me, and I'm like, all right, the light's coming in in a very, you know, what one could say is the light's coming in. I would think to myself, the light's coming in in a very scary way. Um, so my process always looks at what's around me right now. Mm -hmm. At a bare minimum, what can I take and be inspired by? And um, I usually love to translate that in some way at a very minuscule level. So let's say I see a scrapyard and I know I want to photograph it later on for people and present it to them in a certain way, I'll just post a scrapyard. I'll walk by the scrapyard. I'll stare at it a lot. Um, kind of like admire and live with whatever I want to attack. And sometimes that's a shirt. Sometimes that's an area. Sometimes that's just something I saw on Instagram that I do for the deep end. I love that. So living with it would be it. Yeah. Just sitting with it and taking it all in. So you can know what yeah. exactly what you want to shoot. That's pretty much how I do it. Exactly. And you said you were into more than just photography, but cinematography and fashion. Dive into that a little bit. Cinematography, photography led to cinematography a lot. Um, noticing that watching movies and shows and like taking the photographic skills and thought process of like mm. maybe how much light is coming in or how, how much do I want to cover in, in focus has allowed me to think, you know what? I really want to take this motion more than just a photo. Um, and fashion is just like an expression, literally. Um, I love, I love to just throw things in the arm. And I feel like some days it's very colorful. Some days it's very 
dim, but I just love the idea of whatever I wear kind of speaks for me a little bit. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, no matter what it may be, color, pattern, I love to really express through that. And when it comes to cinematography, um, I'm really diving in deeper now. And I'm enjoying it a lot with Super 8 film at the moment. Oh, that's, that's a beautiful form of film. Very expensive. You would know. Very. Yeah. Very. <laughs> I, I have one sitting here right now in the house, and I've been meaning to use it, but the, the price is just really guts to me. And I'm like, not until I have the money to actually get into it. What you could do in Super 8 with film, you could do 40 times. So I know you, you'd understand. Yep. Yep, exactly. And how has getting into all these different mediums helped you grow as a creative? It's allowed me to, to connect them. Um, it's actually easy, I would say, but what, it, what, what has allowed me to grow um, in involving in each strongly is that I can relate the other to the other somehow. Um, sometimes I can connect them all and sometimes I just have to focus on one, but I feel like as a creative, it allows me to be able to always keep in mind how much further can we use this than just right now, you know? So being able to do cinematography and fashion allows me to think, okay, so I want to take this photo on film, but I'm going to style it a certain way and use my view in cinematics a certain way to make a photo almost look like a still maybe from a movie. Yeah, that, so, I, love that. I love that thought process. It's a really good makes for a much more beautiful creative photo exactly especially with the film i feel like you'd understand what the film costs and the greediness that it comes with you want to make sure you're more precise mm. and take your risks like with lots of guarantee especially with film there's very little room for error so any error can mess up your whole photo mess up your whole role sometimes i know yeah. you'd know <laughs> yeah, that's the worst feeling honestly <laughs> Uh, what are some of your favorite projects you have made so far? For sure. Um, I think at the top of that list is um, two years ago, I met up with a friend who is now very close. Like He's like family. His name is Manny. Mm -hmm. um, we shot for a magazine known as Luna Collective. Um, and it was a very no, no boundary project at all. It was very free of expression. Um, the platform we were involved with was so transparent. It like was very much like who we are as people. And then it allowed us to be us in that space. Um, I really enjoyed it because the last thing I thought after picking up film was, oh yeah, you're going to be on a magazine. You're going to be on a magazine as a photographer. Um, it, it was beautiful. It was organic. Um, and looking back at it, it was the start of a lot of success for me as a photographer, as well as just a person who meets other creatives. I love that. It was really just a moment where you learned that you could do this. And you're like, wow, I, people want me to be on their magazines. And you got it, bro. Feeling. That's It's a great feeling. It's awesome, honestly, to be requested in a way where you're trusted like that. Yeah, it's like, it makes you want to take more photos and it makes you want to get out there and continue working and continue growing because if these guys want me, who's to say the big companies don't want me? Bingo. And what are some pieces of advice you give to another creative struggling to find inspiration? Um, enjoy enjoy the, the moment you can't find it as much as when you do. Um, balance is so important, especially when, when you feel like... Um, whether you feel like you have lots of inspiration or none, enjoy both. So like treat, treat it the same. So if you have no inspiration, live in that. Almost like don't, almost like don't care about it and allow yourself to just view and think, well, inspiration's not here. Because when you start to, when you start to entertain and fuel the idea of this isn't present, it becomes more distant, I feel like. Um, I love the idea of I have no inspiration right now. Fine. I'm just gonna. Do something else, cook, clean, watch a TV show. And next thing you know, you're writing down a whole paragraph about what just inspired you, but you didn't even notice it was inspiration because your mind is looking for inspiration, labeling it so strongly. And it is a strong word. It's a beautiful thing, but it's around us so much that when we don't, in a sense, target it so much, it's just going to keep flowing our way. So I feel like if it's not there, 
push it far away. Let it find its way back to you. Yep. It's like when you focus on that aspect of inspiration so much, you get caught up on it. And then when it doesn't come to you, you get discouraged and you're like, what do I do now? Like, if it's not coming to me, right. is it ever going to come to me? And then you're just stuck and you end up not wanting to do anything because you're like, oh, no inspiration, not going to take a photo. When I think you should just be getting out there and trying to take as many photos as you can, no matter if you have inspiration or not, because maybe you find inspiration through that roll of film or through that camera roll of your, of your iPhone. Just got to go out I there. I agree. Just got to go out there I and, and, and take photos, honestly, or if you're if you're a writer read if you're a reader right right like it's like right the opposite for a little bit. maybe you'll find inspiration in the things in that exactly exactly and what are how are some ways the public can reach you um so i'm on instagram in a much simpler way now uh just mangoes mind the word mangoes with an s and then mind all together no spaces or anything um, the same on Twitter. And the beauty is that both of my platforms start with mangoes as well. There's a mangoes market, which is a beautiful thrift shop all year round. Um, it's based online. And then there's mangoes mine. So you can just really find me with mangoes. Mangoes mine will take you to everything else. Okay. So people, if you want to get a photo shoot done by mango, now, you know, and lastly, before we go, what is next for you, mango? Hmm. The way I would love to word it is taking what I know, taking what I do well and doing it at a, at a level that's as fluid as breathing. So I don't want to say mastering what I do um, because I feel like no matter how long I do all these things, I will always be a student. I will always be a person who's looking at the person younger in the room, older, no matter who you are, wanting a sense of source from you because it can burst something else in me. Um, but what's next for me is really taking the photography, the designing, the modeling, and all the things that I express with and spreading farther. It's farther than the Bronx, farther than New York, allowing myself to reach people that are from nowhere near where I'm from, but can connect through something that I emit out. So it's really furthering, furthering mango as, as far as possible. People love the fruit, but I, I want them to enjoy me as much <laughs> it's beautiful thank you thanks I, a lot bro love that love that well thank you for joining us um i, I was glad to have had you on here uh this conversation was very enlightening and thoughtful and i wouldn't have wanted it any other way so thank you for this thank you for joining us it's been an absolute pre pleasure and i look forward to speaking to you Thank you so much for having me. It's honestly a blessing to answer questions with so much thought, um, and especially to a familiar face whose artistry I enjoy myself. So it was a pleasure to be here. Of course, of course. Thank you for joining us on Higher TV. We'll be right back. Hello, and welcome to Higher TV. I'm your host, Christopher Sanchez. Today, we'll be discussing the arts and how one particular Bronx group is expressing their creativity to inspire a new, aspire, new generation of aspiring Bronx artists. Joining with me today is a good friend of mine, rapper, producer, DJ, and creative director of Listen to the Kids, Josiah Sanchez, better known as Contrast. Welcome to the show, Josiah. How are you doing today? Oh, thank you for having me, man. I feel like it's been long overdue. Yeah, man. Do what we got to do. Yeah. So let's just start off with the basics real quick. What exactly is Listen to the Kids? I mean, Listen to the Kids a Bronx-based creative collective. Uh, we all kind of met up in high school and even before then, we just decided to put all our talents together and just create this super team of, of awesome people. So who in the group would be like the founder or where, where the foundation oh, behind that? Brief history, uh, it started with Muzo and Ignis. They were friends since elementary school, I think. I met Ignis in high school, and then we, uh, they already had another name. And then when we got together, we all became the kids. And then we went into listen to the kids and a couple of other members like Finesse, Gatsby, 360. Uh, who am I missing? 
I don't know. People are there, but then we all became together and had the super team. Mm, Got you. So what is the group's overall goals and or goals? They have more than one. So I'll say listen to the kids is basically helping artists find and be the best versions of themselves. Um, we do that through our open mics. We do that through our curated events, our parties. Uh, you know, we care about inclusivity. We care about everybody having a good time and just being able to express themselves and enjoy themselves no matter who you are. So that's one of our biggest things when uh, we put things together and when we work with others. Got it, got it. So I remember, um, hold on, so fast, fast, fast. So you said that it, this is a kid is basically about find, basically having others find their imaginative purpose, correct? So how has Listen to the Kids inspired you personally? Uh, personally, it's helped me grow as an artist, like being able to find myself in a community where other people are creating, where other people have similar ideas or even ideas that don't match to mine, but we're able to kind of collaborate and build and almost like a steel, steel sharpened steel, I believe is the, the term where it's like, I want to rap better than Ignis today, but Ignis might want to sing better than me, but Muso might want to produce better. And so it's just being able to grow around people who are like-minded and have a positive outlook on, on what we're trying to do and what we're trying to accomplish. All right, that's really nice. Um, so I remember last year, was it, no, in 2019, towards the end of 2019, I remember you and everyone else, like Ignis and Muso, they kept saying 2020 was the come, um, the come up year. And unfortunately the pandemic hit. So I know that hit a lot of, uh, that halts a lot of productions, production yeah. and projects. So how has the pandemic affected uh, the production of projects and how did you or anyone else in the group navigate the hurdles? Uh, I say in the beginning of the pandemic, we, it really struck a chord because we, we weren't really seeing each other. I know for me, I wasn't trying to go outside really, um, but we had to kind of get creative and, and do what we could. So we thought about a bunch of ideas, we thought about doing podcasts, we thought about making videos at home. Um, but eventually it all boiled down to like, Okay, if I keep myself safe, you guys keep yourself safe. Who says we can't go out and shoot a music video right now? Or who says we can't go out and uh, go to the studio or, or make something? Or you send a stem in and I'll record and you send it back. And so we just kind of had to collaborate without seeing each other all the time and figure out ways to and like have each other's company, have each other's imprint on the art without being directly next to each other. And I. Yeah, it, it was a struggle, but we, you know, I, I remember like typing up documents about like, mm. hey, we could try to do this on YouTube and maybe we could do IGTV and stuff like that. And so we just, we just had to get crafty. So you guys basically adapted to the situation. Yeah, of course. How, how's that personally uh, giving you skills to advance what you want to do for your career wise? Uh, it definitely made me realize how important social media is and how important media is in general, uh, the internet, um, you know, a lot of what we do is in person. Uh, we love to do shows, we love to do events. So when you take that experience away, how can we give you the listen to the kids experience through a screen? And that was a challenge that kind of we had to overcome and we're still you know, managing to work with. So that, that was like the biggest thing. Gotcha. So with the, with the things that you guys are doing now, and you guys are doing a lot of stuff, I love the work that you all been producing out, especially you with your music. Um, the, the short film that you yeah, making, Calypso. Yeah. So where exactly do you see Listen to the Kids 10 years from now? 10 years from now? I don't know if I have the, uh, the ability to say what we want to do in our 10 year plan, but I'll give you this. Um, we definitely are looking to become, do I tell you? Maybe I do. Um, no, we're just definitely looking to become, again, the best versions of ourselves as artists, as leaders, uh, whether that be in music, in the community, in the industry, um, we definitely just want to level up each year that we um, that we're here. And you know, the thing is, the dream is to always get here, but we have to take those necessary steps to get there. So it, it, it's just want to, you know, we we want to live our dreams in a, in the best way possible. I think that's the ten year plan to make gotcha. sure we're, we're successful. Gotcha, gotcha. So since you don't know what you can see from the 10 years from now, 
Have you guys given back to the community at all? Like, have you gone to schools, teach, you know, do production? If so, what did you do? Um, we actually used to teach um, beat making uh, in a program called Downbeat. Uh, and me, Ignis, Muso, Finesse, uh, 360, we were all part of that. Um, we were just giving back to the community, teaching kids, like elementary school kids, how to make beats. And they had an amazing time. I remember uh, one of the kids was rapping over the beats and, and it was just a fun time. But even um, through our open mics, like for us, that's kind of a community give back as well, because we, you know, we're trying to get artists from the community to, to come out, to support their own people, to express themselves. Like we just did something at Bronx Native, shout out to Bronx Native. Um, we did an open mic over there not too long ago and we had a bunch of people come out, a lot of love, a lot of support, a lot of positivity and just community coming together. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be anything crazy. It's, it, it could just be as simple as here's your mic, pick a song, let's just have some fun. So uh, that was definitely like something dope to see to have the community come together. That's beautiful, especially now in these times in the pandemic, I think the arts is especially needed for people mm -hmm. to get out there with their creative purposes. Uh, so why did you choose the stage name Contrast? I never really understood that. And what does it mean and what represents to you as a person? Do you want the real answer or the fake answer? Yeah, we want the real answer, man. <laughs> real answer? I, yeah. I'm going to do both. <laughs> the real <laughs> answer was I wanted a new name and I was like, oh, what's a synonym for different or differences? And I was like, hmm, Contrast. I like that one. It's got a nice ring to it. That's the, the real answer. The fake answer is, and, you know, when you actually develop the meaning and the identity of, of you know, what you're doing, um, you know, contrast is taking two things and, and separating them, you know what I'm saying, or, or comparing them. Uh, but when you compare those two things, you're looking at all these differences, all these differences. And sometimes we got to look at like, yes, I'm different from you. You're different from me. We, I come from here. You come from here. But there's a lot of similarities, too. So contrast basically is just like, you know, I might be a creator, I might be an artist, a rapper for the Bronx, this, that, and the third, but we all have similar struggles. We all have similar things that we go through and that's going to be incorporated into the music. You know, my, my heartbreaks could be shared with this person's heartbreaks, even though he, this person might come from Milwaukee somewhere or you <laughs> know, in Florida somewhere, but we, we all have this similar story, similar themes that we go through and just, we're not that different, even though, you know, we're not the same. So that, that was yeah. basically like the another thing with the name <laughs> <laughs> all right so you make plenty of songs in your time so tell me what was the creative process like for you i think each song the creative process is always different it's always different uh sometimes it could just be me uh singing a voice memo in my phone and coming up with a melody uh sometimes it'll, i'll be home and i'll make a beat other times we'll be at the studio and we're just having a conversation and but typically what I like to do now is we'll work on the beat first. Um, and then I'll just get in the booth and, and sometimes it doesn't even have to be words that come out. Just I'll, I'll sometimes I'll hum, I'll say the same words over and over. I might throw in a little freestyle in there and then it just kind of helps me get ideas across, get the flow out there, get the melodies out. And when we go back in, I'll refine it, get a story out of it, get words out of it. And that's how the song will get made. And do you get writer's block anytime from there? All the time. I, I, so, you know, some people, they kind of force themselves through it. And um, even even with beat making as well, people will force themselves to make beats every day, every day, every day. Uh, some days I can do that. Other days, I'm not going to force myself. You know, part of being creative is that creativity is, is random. It's, it's when you feel inspired. And so I don't ever want to force myself to feel inspired or force myself to be creative all the time. Um, I'm already a creative individual, but I don't want to necessarily keep taking away from that um in terms of being productive uh of course you want to be productive but just let, letting those things come out naturally that, that's really my big thing in the process now and like yeah it's a very important point that's a very important point you made out being natural as a writer myself i always found it helpful to basically take breaks every now and then and the ideas come to you fluently rather than just actually forcing yourself and ramming your way through yep uh, so out of all the songs you made, whether they're publicly released or within the vault, uh, which is your favorite and why? I think I have two. Um, shout out to all the OG Contrast fans and the OG friends of mine. Uh, in high school, I made the song called Lowe's. 
and oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah <laughs> that one was just a moment in time um I'm not gonna go into specifics why it's just that song has always been special to me just because of the uh just the <laughs> just the stuff behind it the uh the the way it was received by everybody uh it was just a big moment but uh personally right now my favorite song of mine is called with you um it, i just dropped it last month or so or two months ago i don't really remember <laughs> but um for me that was the first song where i kind of challenged myself to um break out of a shell you know I, I do like to sing a lot I'm not necessarily the most gifted singer but this is the first time where i really sang a whole verse it's the first time i, I really i think I, I wrote a really good catchy hook I produced the whole beat myself um, alongside Muso. He helped me out with a couple of things. Shout out to Morph. Morph mixed it, uh, mastered by Muso. Um, it's going on towards the album, but that's such. Uh, okay. Yeah, that's that's one of my favorite songs. It's just, I, I think the way it came together, it, it, it was awesome. Got it, got it. So outside of your stage name, exactly who is Josiah? What do you do when you're away from the studio? You're taking a break, you're relaxing. Like, who Who is the man behind Contrast? In my conscious, honestly, bro, I, I just, I'll be chilling. <laughs> um, you know, I, I, I feel like people always think that, you know, as an upcoming rapper, our lives are extremely hectic and crazy. And of course, we're always working, always trying to find, you know, something to do, something to collaborate on, something to work on. And we're always trying to get better. But a lot of the times, you know, I find myself on YouTube looking at Marvel fan theories about mm. why... <laughs> Doctor Strange is going to completely blow the multiverse up or how uh, Loki is connected to this and that one and this and that. And I, I, I find myself watching videos like that most of the time. I, I love Disney for some reason. I love um, Universal. Like I, I was in um, Islands of Adventure in Florida the other day uh, on roller coasters and stuff, just having mad fun. Like for me, I, I, I honestly, I think Outside of being contrast, I'm just a little kid, bro. I just love, mm. I love comic books, I love movies, I love superheroes and amusement parks and all types of stuff like that. Yeah, never lose your inner child, man. That's the best thing you can keep on to and hold on to. So, uh, what words of advice can you give to those uh, who are struggling to find their imaginative purpose? You know, it's a very difficult process to do, and like you even said it yourself, you gotta be natural. But any yeah. other uh, suggestions you can give for us or to them to basically find that creative flow? Yeah, uh, don't be afraid to try anything. I think, uh, you know, a lot of times when it comes to expressing ourselves, especially creatively, uh, it's sometimes we might put ourselves in a box or set parameters for ourselves or kind of just close ourselves in because we don't want to express how we feel or this emotion or people might think this sounds weird or this. And you kind of got to take all those away and just do it and um, enjoy yourself while you're doing it. I don't think I would have gotten as far in my my skills and you know what I do if I'd said, oh, I only want to make this one kind of song because I'm afraid people are going to hear me sing or I'm afraid people are going to hear me rap or they might not like this beat that I made. I just have to keep going and trying it out and experimenting and that's how you really get better. So my biggest thing is don't be afraid to try anything. All right. And one more question for you, uh, Josiah. So you know, you're a rapper. You're a DJ, you're a career director. What do you envision yourself for you personally in your career? What do you want to do? Uh, so for contrast, honestly, I, I want to blow up and act like I don't know nobody. No, let me <laughs> <laughs> no um, you know, that's a great question. I, honestly, I think I just want to reach a point where I'm able to, one, provide for my family to be successful enough where I can, you know, make a substantial living off doing what I love. Um, I want to be able to help the people that help me uh, bring others with me. I think that's, you know, something that's really overlooked. Uh, you know, a lot of times people are like, oh, forget everybody that 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 was, you know, here with me. I, I'm up now. I'm rich. I'm this, I'm that. I don't need nobody. But, you know, sometimes they forget who was there for them when they didn't have nothing. Uh, and so it's like, you've, you know, you worked hard. Trust me. It, it's like... You, you're the one that's doing it. You know, at the end of the day, your success is kind of based on what you put into it. Not all the time, but most of the time. So you may feel like you don't want to help nobody out, but I just, I feel like 
that's the thing with New York. Like nobody wants to put each other on. Nobody wants to really help each other. And I think that's where we kind of try to break the mold because there's a lot of talent out there. There's a lot of good people out there and kind of got to weave through all the fake stuff and find that community of people that support you and love you for who you are, for what you do. And, you know, so it's like, when we reach that point, I just want to be happy. I want to be good. I want to have those around me successful, as successful as I am. And, you know, it's, it's a lot of love. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful thing, man. That's really great. So uh, that's all the time we have for today. Uh, once again, my deepest gratitude for your appearance on the show, Josiah. Thank you, bro. Thank you for having me. Thank you for sharing your artistic vision and creative nature. Uh, make sure to check out Listen to the Kids on YouTube and Instagram. We hope that their work will inspire you to find your creative purpose, especially contrast as well. Uh -huh. And with that being said, I'm your host, Christopher Sanchez of, of Higher TV, signing off. Shout out to Chris, man. Time for the hot girls. One time for the Jones. One time for New York. One time for the Bronx. One time for the city boys. One time for the block.